Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, March 1st, 5.33 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. May corn futures unchanged at 6.30 and a quarter. May soybeans up nine and a half at 14.88 and a half. May Chicago wheat up one and a quarter at 7.06 and three quarters. May Kansas City wheat up one at 8.13 and a quarter. May spring wheat down one at 8.67 and three quarters. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. If you're watching it on YouTube, guys, we hit 8,000 subscribers yesterday. Uh, appreciate your support. Next stop is 9,000, of course. Um, hey, yesterday I did a premium video regarding tracking local basis. I've always been told you should track your local basis. Yet most of your grain buyers, whether it's an elevator, ethanol plant, uh, processor, whoever, they don't issue historical basis charts or data in most instances. So I think it's a good idea to track it yourself. Yet I've never really seen a good way to do it. So I, I put together a spreadsheet that I sent out to all of my premium subscribers this morning. Um, essentially like how to track and populate uh, local basis data and then make charts. I'd love to have like seasonal basis charts of basis in my backyard. That's the goal here. So I made that tool available, showed you guys how to do it. If you guys are interested in this sort of stuff, sign up today, 50 bucks a month, cancel at any time, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell, sell you uh, anything else. You could sign up in like one minute on your phone or your computer this morning, guys. Corn futures fell to their lowest level since December yesterday. There doesn't appear to me to be one single fundamental driver of the sell-off. I think that the catalyst were those bearish outlook form projections from USDA last week. And as I've discussed at length, I mean, a lot of that stuff is just smoke and mirrors. Nobody knows what the corn yield's gonna be. Nobody knows what demand's gonna be for the 23, 24 marketing year. Yet I think the trade did act on it. And I think that it was a, a reason or a catalyst for a sell-off. Speculative length has likely begun to liquidate some positions here. You had some technical support busted near term in the corn market and then yesterday in the soybean market. So I think you're seeing some fund liquidation. Um, we haven't seen CFTC data or updated CFTC data in a long time. The most recent set of CFTC data is accurate as of January 31st. So on January 31st, uh, funds were net long 175,000 contracts of soybeans. At yesterday's close, uh, private groups were estimating a net long of about 150,000, give or take. In the corn market, it's kind of similar. Uh, private groups estimated that funds liquidated at least 10,000 contracts of corn in each of the last four sessions and that they're long about 177,000 contracts. So I think we've seen some liquidation, but the scary thing is that, uh, or one potentially scary thing is that they've still got a lot of length in these markets. And we're talking a net long of 150,000 in soybeans, maybe 175, 180,000 in corn. Uh, funds probably building a large net short position in the SRW wheat market. Although again, we don't know that for sure. And I don't really know when USDA's, or not USDA, CFTC, I don't know when CFTC is gonna be back up to date in regard to their data. But I think it's, it's fair to say that we've got some speculative uh, liquidation here among large money managers. Spring crop insurance prices are set. Uh, the D23 corn contract averaged 591 per bushel during February. That's the second best spring insurance price on record behind only 2011 when it was 601. Uh, last year's corn guarantee was 590. The November 23 soybean contract averaged 1376 per bushel during February. That was the second best on record also behind only last year's 1433. So guys, if you're a farmer and you have not talked to your crop insurance agent yet, uh, make sure you do that as soon as possible. Analysts continue to reduce their crop estimates for Argentina. Well-followed crop scout Cordonier pegged the Argentina soybean crop at just 32 million metric tons. He was 34 previously. USDA is still way up at 41. So that difference, that 9 million metric ton difference between, say, USDA and Cordonier, that's 330 million bushels. That's a big chunk of change just in regard to the difference between those two estimates. Uh, that's one of the, the Cordonier air estimate. That's one of the lowest ones out there, but I've heard plenty of chatter uh, of, of a number below 30 million metric tons. Uh, the forecast doesn't look good. This is the next 10 days of rainfall or lack of rainfall uh, on my screen here. And most of your key corn and soybean growing areas are going to see little to no rain. Uh, conditions in, in terms of temperatures are going to be above normal. It's going to be hot. So hot and dry in Argentina. Crop estimates continue to fall. I believe Cordonier said in his report that he's got kind of a downward bias here. The White House is expected to recommend approval of expanded E15 uh, ethanol sales in some Midwestern states. So this is not going to be a national thing the way that it sounds to me this morning. Governors from some Corn Belt states have requested expanded or year-round sales of E15 ethanol blends. Reuters reports that Biden will recommend that the requests be approved, but that they would likely not take effect until the summer of 2024. So big picture, this could be helpful in regard to, um, you know, these big ethanol stocks that we've gotten, that sort of thing. But uh, short term shouldn't have much of an impact. 
China's economy is showing signs of improvement. Uh, China's uh, PMI, Purchasing Man Manager Index data, rose to its highest level since 2012 um, last month. The reading of 52.6 implies expansion. The way this thing works, anything above 50 in regard to the reading implies expansion. Anything below 50 implies contraction. So gauge of manufacturing activity. Economists, of course, would point to the reopening uh, following nearly three years of COVID lockdowns as the reason for the stronger print. Some might also argue, and, and maybe this is the flip side of this, that uh, the China's re Chinese reopening, if it's, if it's good enough or big enough or uh, widespread enough, that uh, it could be inflationary in nature, you know, if, if demand for crude oil, grains, food products, I mean, if all that stuff increases because of the Chinese reopening, you could argue that that's an inflationary thing um, in itself. Cattle market was higher yesterday. There was some cash cattle trade, uh, light volumes at 165 in the Western Corn Belt, probably not enough to establish a trend, but the board was higher yesterday. U.S. dollar is uh, lower to sharply lower this morning. Uh, the S&P is up 13, the Dow Jones up 70. Gold's up six bucks, crude oil down 78 cents in the April WTI 76.27. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you Thursday.